this is Eric Johnson. I'm here at Fender, and this is the 1954 reissue of the Strat Virginia, and we're here to talk about it. So Fender uh, came to me about a new wonderful series they were starting called Stories Guitars, where they were going to um, uh, make guitars by certain artists that created um, certain musical history of such. And, and they had strats that they had modded into their own particular way and nuance that they loved the guitar. And they um, asked me if I wanted to be one of the first ones that they did. I said, yeah, you know, I had a 54 Strat that was very modern in this way. You know, it had a different bridge pickup. It had, you know, later 50s pickups instead of early 50s pickups, but it was a 54 Strat, it had a 500K pod, had sassafras wood, had flat radius, big frets, and all sorts of little things like the string tree. And uh, I, I sent a list to uh, Fender, and, and they said, yeah, this is perfect. This is what we were talking about. So I was like, wow, could we possibly make a, re a replica of one of my favorite uh, guitars I've ever owned? It was a real career guitar for me. I recorded it on all my uh, VMU's Musicom record and being a silent toured forever. And so they made a couple of prototypes, and I was like, wow, this is awesome, because I, I was able to get a brand new guitar that, that has a lot of the soul and, and, and um, magic that my original Virginia had. So I have in my hand here um, a replica of the 1954 Strat Virginia that I had, and this is a U.S. production model that Alex Perez uh, spearheaded building, and it's turned out strikingly close to my original. I'm extremely happy with them. They're, they're a guitar that I can actually just pick out of the case from the factory and start playing, which I'm... Uh, it's nice. It's got all the appointments that I like with the little stronger bridge pickup that doesn't sacrifice the rhythm tone. You still have it. But it's strong enough to where if I go to a lead tone, it... it still can kind of push the amp a little bit built a bit more and get a little more out of it. I think that has to do with the sassafras as well as the stronger pickup. The neck on these uh, U.S. production models is uh, strikingly similar to every single 54 I've ever played, and that was by design and by purpose. It's a little thicker than some Strat necks, but not super wide. It's, it's wide enough to be comfortable, but not wide enough to, the, the having it a little bit thinner, you can do voicing. It's easier to get around. I, I particularly like this kind of neck. It's really my favorite uh, neck that I of the strats that, that I play. When I was a kid, I was in my early 20s, and I happened to go by this uh, music store, this warehouse. I needed to get a, a speaker fix, so they sent me over to, it's called J.R. Reed's in Austin, Texas. And they said, well, go over to this warehouse we have and get your speaker reconned or whatever. So I go in there to give them the speaker, and I look over in the corner room, and just uh, and just no case, just sitting in the corner room is this old Stratocaster. And I asked the guy, I said, what's up with that? And he said, oh, uh, somebody brought it in here to get a pickup fixed. And um, I said, wow, I said, uh, it's, do you think the guy wants to keep the guitar? And he said, I don't know. And he said, here's his phone number. So I called him. And he says, well, it was my grandfather's. I really don't want to get rid of it. My grandfather gave it to me. But I'd love to, you know, if you had a, a Gibson guitar you'd trade me, I'll, uh, I'll give you the 54 Strat. So I quickly went out and found a model Gibson that he wanted, and I met him in a parking lot of a grocery store. <laughs> and, and we traded guitars. And that, I, I, had, I had that guitar for many years and did a lot of my records on it. Um, yeah, it was, and I came to find out it was a 54 Strat. The way I named the guitar Virginia is in 1954, from uh, what I've been told, there was four uh, ladies that put the guitars together, and they would uh, put a piece of masking tape inside with their names on the guitars. As they finished the guitar, they'd sign it and date it. And I didn't know that at the time. Uh, somebody told me that later, but I remember once I was changing out a pickup on the guitar, and I pulled the, the pick guard off in there. Sure enough, there was that piece of tape in there, and it said Virginia. Uh, June, I can't remember, June something, 1954. And when I saw that, I went, oh, okay, I'll just call it Virginia. <laughs> so, uh, and the 54 Strat I had, 
it had a um, a really different tone. I um, unfortunately went through a period. I took a fall and it got heard, and so instead of like trying to, I tried to fix it, but I couldn't get the tone back. So I ended up selling it, and I tried to find some other guitars, and I kept finding. I'd find a 54 Strat to replace it, and then another one, and that one didn't work. And I said, well, what was it about that first one I had that was so special? And I was talking to Mike Stevens in Alpine, a guitar builder, who used to work on Virginia all the time. And he said, well, you know, your uh, your 54 Strat was sassafras. And I went, what? And I'd, I'd never heard of guitars having sassafras. And it's evidently in 53 and 54, Leo got uh, a little bit of sassafras in, and he built some tellies and strats with it. So. Um, I thought, well, I, maybe that's, you know, there's something to that. So uh, when Fender and I talked about doing a uh, stories edition of a uh, reissue of the 54 Strat Virginia, I said, well, why don't we try it in Sassafras? And sure enough, that when I got that prototype from Fender, I went, wow, it's got this tone that I've been looking for that has like my original one. I think there's something to the, the Sassafras. Word. Uh, obviously, everybody has different tastes, but for a particular kind of smooth, sustainy tone, as you turn it up, it kind of gets uh, gainy and kind of it stays a little violin kind of a vibe. I think there's something to the sassafras, so that's how that all kind of came about. There was a, a really great repairman in Austin back in the old days uh, named Zach Berry who used to work on my guitars. And um, I, I used to bring in these old strats that I'd find, and, and he'd say, well, you know, if we took a little wood out of the middle of the neck we, and put big frets on, we can play better. And so he started doing that to him. Of course, that was back in the day, so you'd pick up a 50 strat for $300. and so say, yeah, playing the board, that's fine. You know, you don't really, it's it's something that people don't do as much now because the guitars have gotten as valuable. But um, yeah, just, you know, flattening out that board a little bit, not so much to where it doesn't feel comfortable, but enough to where you can get lower action and, and stuff. So it was kind of just a, an experiment that Zach turned me on to, and, and uh, I've loved it ever since, yeah. A couple of things I do to try to even out the bridge pickup with the other pickups, I'll, I'll take the tone off the middle and I put it on the, the bridge pickup, and then I can back it off just like from 10 to seven, and it kind of equilibrates the tone. And then another thing I found is when I was playing up high on the bridge pickup, it, uh, sometimes the, the high E would get a little thin and piercing. And I thought, well, I'd like to get the EQ about the same as the B string. So uh, I put a different saddle on the E first, which um, has a little thicker tone, just to kind of uh, equal it out with the B string a little bit more. Originally, the uh, piece that uh, we came up with was taking a... Uh, a, a block saddle, a Fender block saddle from the 70s, and we, we took a chunk out of the middle and we put in some Delrin plastic, and, and then I, uh, the string would go over the plastic part, which is a hard plastic, and I noticed that that, that worked out a lot better for me. It still had the sustain because it was a metal bridge piece, but it kind of, uh, it took some of that sharp edge off of the, uh, the E first, and so that was um, the easiest way to try to accomplish that um, was to use these Graftec saddles because they have a little bit of a graphite thing. It's hard to see, but right in the middle of there, it's, there's a little bit of graphite, so it kind of uh, does the same thing. So the pickups in Virginia were kind of a, a trial and error thing over the years, and I ended up with two 50s, late 50s uh, pickups, I guess Alnico 5s, a little stronger than original 54 pickups. And then the uh, bridge pickup was a DiMarzio HS2. However, I wouldn't hook up the bottom coil of the stack. I'd leave it single coil. And then I'd recover some of the highs by putting a 500K volume pot in, um, which would end up being, the, my favorite ones were the 500Ks. It would end up being more like 400K, you know, not quite 500, but more than 250. And so that's what we've done on this guitar is we've really kind of uh, zeroed in on the, the, the resistance of the volume pot. And um, it just so happened that these, these two pickups were the same polarity, but they were opposite polarity of the DiMarzio. So if I was in uh, the position between these two, it still sounded, you know, that typical sound between the two. But I, when I went to these, it get that real kind of thin tone. And I, 
I like to listen to Japanese music and kind of Kodo stuff and all that. I thought it was just kind of an interesting sound. So I left it. And what it is, is, is because these are the same polarity, if you flip the wires, you get hum canceling. Plus you get that real thin kind of different sound. It's kind of a Peter Green thing too, that that he used to get too. Or even a BB, you can kind of do a BB thing like he used to do with the variatone. So it's kind of just an interesting different thing. And in the uh, Virginia uh, reissue that we're doing, we, we tried to get as close as we could to the original uh, guitar and it had all cloth wiring in it. I'm not sure exactly of, of the exact difference between cloth and, and uh, plastic wire, but I, I just kinda, I grew up with loving vintage strats and they all had cloth wire and I thought I just wanted to keep it old school, kinda like a, an homage to the, you know. And so the, the original 54 strats had a round string tree. However, I find these more, you know, the ones they started in the late 50s are a little, they work a little bit better uh, as far as tuning. And I, I don't know, it just seemed, it, it, some of it could just be, you know, you know, what you think and whether, I don't know how much reality is, but every little tiny little thing can add up. And I thought that maybe the, to me, I, I noticed that putting a nylon spacer under it obviously would get the angle up to where I you could, had to use it as little as possible. Plus the nylon seemed to keep it apart from the resonation of the guitar and just seemed to work better for me, sounded a little better. We tried to stay as close as we could to a lot of the aspects of the original 54 Strat because there's a certain magic in that, you know, first take thing. And, and it had lacquer finish. I think the lacquer feels kind of has a kind of an old school feel to it. It also, um, it seems to breathe uh, well. And um, it's not a real thick finish. It's gonna be a, a kind of a thing where almost as if it's like ever so slightly aged, but it'll be a brand new instrument, but ever so slightly aged in the sense that it won't be real thick and highly polished and... and. Here the uh, master built custom shop version of the 1954 Strat Virginia. And uh, it was quite a process to get to the point of where we have it, where we realize it, where it's just really awesome the, the way I love it. And uh, Carlos Lopez is here. He's building all the master built guitars that will be made at Fender. And uh, we were here to discuss how we got to this place and where we did all the things, that, like a, a long list of stuff that we had to get to. Yeah, when, when I took on the project, it was a bit. Uh... It was a bit, uh, I was intimidated a little bit because, you know, because of who you are and all the specs that we had uh, to get to this guitar um, was a bit challenging, you know, from the sassafras to uh, the, the flame neck and to the pickups and everything like that. So it was a challenge for me to, to, to get it to where you were happy with it. And my, and my, uh, and my, um, uh, my the challenge was uh, for you to get it and love it the first time, right out of the case. And uh, so that was my goal. And I think you did. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of the first times in my life I, I got this guitar from Fender and Carlos, and I picked it a, a out, and I uh, made a couple of intonation things on the bridge and started playing. I went, well, I'm done. It's great. <laughs> and I love it. It's, it has everything that I've always wanted in a Strat. I'm the, it's the, the wonderful uh, thing with the 54 strap, but it's been enhanced by what Carlos has done with this long list of stuff. And it's just really tweaked to where I feel is just a, a real clear destination to be with a Fender guitar to kind of cover as many bases as, as you want musically. And I think one of the, the favorite parts of, about this one, and kind of sets it apart, is uh, the Closet Classic uh, yes. relic that we yeah. did on it. And there's, yeah. there's certain things that I've learned over the years to get the checking so it goes horizontal. And I thought it'd be, you know, special and I thought uh, you would appreciate it. You and so it, yeah, it, uh, yeah it, it came out really nice. There's a lot of subtle differences that we did, you know, like the knobs being rolled over slightly mm -hmm. and getting a little bit of dirt in between the little crevices of the, the volume and tone uh, knobs. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of detail that I put into it 
and, uh, you know, hand selecting the wood and stuff like that and uh, rolling the fingerboard, the edge of the fingerboard and the frets and, you know, mm -hmm. just little details like that that mm -hmm. uh, I think players appreciate and, um, and Eric appreciates it, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's just got a, you know, it's a, it's a new guitar, but it's a beautiful compromise between having a new guitar that has a, a vintage, natural, old school feel to it. And that's, I think that's what Carlos did with the finish. I mean, it, it apparently is new, but it has ever so slight checking. It has a thin lacquer and the neck is hand carved. Everything's hand built about these particular run instruments. And it just has a real, just like an old violin feel to it. So there's one thing I wanted to ask you is mm -hmm. uh, the flat washer in the jack. What was the, uh, what was the I idea behind that? That was a happy accident that happened. Uh, uh, Bob Harris in Austin many years ago uh, did some work on my original 54 Strat Virginia. And when he did it, he, he put the jack back together with the flat washer. And then many years later, I noticed when I was playing one of my other fenders and it didn't have quite the same sound. I was kind of looking and go, what is it? And I, I noticed that, you know, that flat washer. I went, no, that's not possible. And, but so I put the flat washer uh, on, on the other guitar and, went, and I noticed there's a little difference. Mm -hmm. And, and I started thinking, that's crazy, but it's like all the sound. If you think about, you know, sometimes the littlest things, make a big difference in the sound. I agree. I and agree. and it it it's um it it sometimes can be like, wow, oh, that's crazy, you know, like you, you wouldn't think it would make a difference. But uh you know, since now we know about, you know, DC resistance of batteries, we know about cable direction, we know about all these things that, you know, 30 years ago we we maybe laughed at. But um so all your sound is going through this jack. And believe it or not, putting that flat washer on it takes out some of the the Raz, of, like it's more apparent on like if you're playing lead tones with a lot of distortion. And my whole thing is trying to get the distortion to be as pure sounding, as possibly pure sounding as you would the clean tone. Yeah. You know, I, instead of having like a nice clean tone and then you go to distortion, it's just like this, you know, like a lot of noise. So, it, but that plays a part in it. Having that flat washer takes out some of the Raz. And I don't know why. I just, uh, I made peace with the fact that it does it. Yeah. Building this guitar, it was um, it was really cool to see how you customize yours to make it to right. get to a place where you wanted to get to easily, you know, as you as you're playing. And yeah. so, I, and I noticed it when I played it for the first time, how it resonated. It was different from any yeah. other 54s that I've made, mm. and especially the sassafras. And there's, there, there's something to special about yeah. it. Yeah, sassafras yeah, yeah. wood. I, and um, I, I imagine in 53 and 54, if Leo got, he probably, uh, according to Mike Stevens, he said they probably got some rogue trees in. They went, oh, let's just use them. Yeah. We got them, you know. I heard and, that too. And, yeah. Which, like a lot of things in life, are happy accidents that end up being kind of a gift, yeah. you know. And I, I think it, that there, um, and certainly, you know, there's all sorts of woods that Fender uses that sound amazing. I think it's just a matter of the nuances of it's just a little different. It has a little different tone, and, and it really is something I really dig about it. It yeah. seems to cover a lot of bases that way. Yeah, Eric, uh, you used uh, the Virginia on tones. Uh, do you want to talk about that? I did, yeah. Um, I used it on tones and all of your music, all, all the music on uh, Venus Isle. Um, it was my go-to instrument for almost the complete record, all those complete recordings because I could get like a really nice uh, clean tone, but I could do, do like the crunch rhythm stuff. And it was, uh, the guitar is real friendly to overdrive pedals. So I was able to do, you know, 95% of all the lead tones with it as well. It, it um, pretty much could kind of cover all the gamuts of all the different uh, textures and sounds I, I wanted to get. Eric, let's, let's talk about the pickup configuration and how you, why you chose to do it this way. 
So on this guitar, uh, it's got a lot of the, the uh, traditional uh, classic Strat tones. You have the, the, the neck position, which is a, a just ever so slightly overwound 50s uh, Strat pickup. It's got a, it still has a nice clean tone. Also use it with a little bit of uh, uh, distortion, like. And then if I go to uh, the mid position between these two pickups, that's where I got the uh, kind of the it's it's out of phase, so you get this real kind of. Up, it doesn't have the tone on it, so it's just straight tone. And then, of course, the, uh, the typical tone between these two pickups. to the uh, bridge pickup, it's a little bit stronger than a usual bridge pickup, but not enough to where you lose the rhythm tone, so you still have. If I go to a lead tone, it'll have a little bit more gain than usual. Basically the five tones. I think any guitar that uh, someone picks up, it has to be something that resonates with them. Um, the the Strat has always kind of resonated with me, as with a lot of players. It's it's a, a very versatile instrument. It covers a lot of bases. The the things that were the change to make it, uh, in particular, like Virginia, are little nuances that just to me define and clarify the already intrinsic. Uh, uh, value and playability of a, of a Stratocaster, but in doing so, I just felt like for me, it, it, it it's it's a, it put it in a place where I feel at home and at peace with this guitar. In so much of all the different styles or areas that I want to musically play, so um, that was important to me. Um, I can play a stock Stratocaster, and and enjoy it. I, um, if I want to like make a little bit bigger view of well, how, but but if I wanted the, that one instrument to kind of really cover as much as possible, then there's these few tw tweaks that Fender and Carlos and I did together to just kind of uh, you know capture what I spent many years doing on my uh, favorite uh, 54 I ever owned. Yeah, I love the fact that this is going to be available to to. Uh, all the players out there and uh, musicians that want to check it out. It's, it's, it's really a, a, a quintessential, you know, uh, destination to where I love, you know, everything that I love about a Stratocaster and it, to have it to be available to any and all people that want to check it out. It's, it's, I think it's going to be great. Thank you.